What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful.com, here with a name you know. We've interviewed him a couple times here on Fightful, once in person at Chicago at StarCast. We're so glad to have him back. Things have changed quite a bit in that one year, one year this week. Fred Rosser, how you doing, man? Check it out, baby. Check it out. I love New Japan. The wait is finally over, man. Uh, I think the last time I talked to you, uh, I had stressed about wanting to do something with New Japan. Now it's all happening, man. And you know, thank you again for the opportunity to be able to share my story, man. I always say, don't die with a story and you tell it, man. So <clears throat> uh, it's finally happening for me, man. I'm super, super pumped for um, what's going to happen with New Japan. Well, what's happened with New Japan already? You had your first match there. I got to ask, how do you feel? Oh, man, I'm still on cloud nine, man. I finally did it. You know, I, I, I did my thing with WWE. And now that I have this opportunity, thanks to Rocky Romero uh, with New Japan, the sky's the limit for me, man. And the response so far has been tremendous, man. <clears throat> uh, everyone's been saying that I, I, I'm a great fit there. And that, that means the world to me, you know, especially the respect of your peers, for them to say that <clears throat> everything that they're watching is really translating well on TV. So, you know, it, it means the world to me. Now, you mentioned Rocky Romero. Was he the person who made contact with you? How did that happen? I'm really interested to see how, how this unfolded. Yeah, well, how it all happened was last year, September, I ran into a show with Lance Hoyt in Pomona, California, and him and I... Uh, came up in the uh, FCW system in 2010. So fast forward to 2019 in, Pomo in Pomona, California, when I ran into him at a show, and he had gave me this flyer, this New Japan flyer that oh, they wow. were doing a show at the Globe Theater. So I saved it. He gave this to me uh, September 2019 and November 11th at 7 p.m. at the Globe Theater. New Japan was doing a show. So he gave this to me. I held on to it. The show was at 7 and I got there at five to meet all the wrestlers and to kind of feel the ring out a little bit. September 11th, tomorrow will be 18 years I've been wrestling. I still wanted to feel the ring because it's a different ring. It's a hard ring. Uh, yeah. And I wanted to be able to watch the show from beginning to end <clears throat> to see if I fit in. And that was the one question that was going through my head because I was in their little VIP section watching the show from beginning to end. And that same question, I'm here to see, do I fit in? Do I fit in? Do I fit in? And after it was all said and done and the show was done, I said to myself, man, I can hang with these guys. I can really go. And I talked to Rocky Romero after the show, and I said, man, you know, I've wrestled all over the world, but anytime WWE was doing a tour of Japan, I was always on a different tour. I was either on the UK tour or not on tour at all. So it's always been a bucket list of mine to compete for New Japan. And I told Rocky that, and this was November of 2019. Fast forward to 2020, January, and February, I had uh, signed on to do my first ever musical, off-Broadway musical, where I was singing, dancing, and acting in New York. So the reason why I did that was because it was an opportunity to kind of step out of the wrestling box and to do something different. And it was Chris Jericho that not literally encouraged me, but from his stint on Dancing with the Stars, you know, I said to myself, well, if he can do it, so can I. So I signed on to do this musical January and February of this year, and it was the best, best decision I ever made. And um, I would do it again in a heartbeat. <clears throat> and then the pandemic hit in March. And uh, it is what it is. Fast forward to May of this year, May or June of this year, Rocky Romero had called me up. And he told me about this opportunity with New Japan, and I had, and I was on cloud nine. I said, Rocky, let me just get back to you. I got to <clears throat> talk to my family, and my family gave me the blessing to give it a shot. It sounded like a great opportunity because they were following the protocol with the COVID testing and all that stuff. And I called up Rocky. Well, actually, <clears throat> um, I had... I hadn't told my family. So, uh, you know, Rocky told me about this opportunity. And then two days later, two, two days later, Rocky texted me again and was like, have you talked to your family? I said, Rocky, uh, I, I'm going to talk to him this afternoon. 
or at night and get their blessings. So I finally talked to my family and they blessed me with the opportunity to compete with New Japan. And I called up Rocky and I said, yeah, let's do it. So I, I was, you know, finally able to do it. You know, <clears throat> I do a podcast, Pro and Bro Wrestling. So I was happy that I was finally able to kind of, you know, not be on the outside. Now I can kind of have my cake and eat cake and eat it too. You know, watch WWE and all the wrestling organizations with no fans, you know. I'm doing a podcast. I haven't experienced the no fans yet. So now I'm able to do a podcast and talk about my New Japan experiences with no fans. Now the fans are so important. They help cushion the abuse, the, uh, the blows that we take in the ring. The crowd is so important. But something happens, man, when I hit that New Japan curtain, it's like all my attention is on my opponent and on working the cameras, you know? The cameras are important. That's what you're going to be seeing, you know what I mean? So all my attention is on my opponent and the cameras. That's all I'm thinking. So the fans are important, but when I'm in the zone, like, I still feel like the place is rumbling. So uh, we've got kind of a lot to unpack there. The first thing you mentioned, the ring. How was it adjusting to that? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty hard, you know. Uh, I'm not going to lie. WWE, those guys got it good because everything is just so cushioned and padded so nicely. And nothing fancy about New Japan, but I'm very happy to be able to grace the squared circle. Uh, the ring is the same size as WWE, 20 by 20. Um, but when I'm in there, oh, man, I definitely, I definitely fit in. And watching myself back, I'm like, man, I definitely, I definitely can hang with any of the New Japan uh, superstars. You were in their team with Alex Zane. He lives like 30 minutes from me. What do you think of him? He's really emerging all across the world right now. Well, Alex and the entire roster is one of the hardest working rosters that I've ever been a part of. And I'm not just saying that because uh, I've watched these guys, uh, Jay White, uh, you know, Finley. Uh, I've watched all these guys. And now that I'm part of the roster, Jeff Cobb, you know, Jeff Cobb, I love Jeff Cobb. Like before actually meeting him, but just watching him on television, I'm like, man, this guy's a killer. But when you share a locker room with him, He's a jokester. He's very calm, cool, and collected. Like, man, awesome roster, man. Awesome roster. So the last time I spoke to you, it was a year ago uh, at StarCast. Mm -hmm. We were in Chicago. You had not yet wrestled in 2019 at that point. I know that you, you had a few matches after that, and you'd been off TV for a while. Was there any mm -hmm. part of you that wondered if that was going to happen, if you even wanted to do that? Or did you know in your mind, no, I'm going to get back there. I'm going to do that. Because it seemed like you did have ambitions to do other things, like you mentioned, like with singing, acting, any number of things. Um, <clears throat> well, I try to focus more on the quality over quantity. <clears throat> Once I was done with WWE in 2017, I've done some of my best work. You know, I've wrestled guys like Jake Atlas, Fala Ba. Uh, last year, late last year, I wrestled Sean Spears, you know, and the biggest compliment for me is from a peer, you know, when he comes back from the curtain and he's like, man, I needed that. That's the biggest compliment in the world. So to be able to have quality matches with quality promotions has been number one for me. Uh, on top of the wrestling, I do a lot of speaking with the LGBTQ community or anyone that gets bullied into silence. But I've got to say 2020, I've been very lucky with a lot of brand deals that I've been working with, whether it's uh, CBD Wellness, uh, Keto Snack Companies, Celsius Official Energy Drinks, knock on wood. I've been very lucky because it takes time uh, to create content, videos, pictures, uh, to display on my social media, which is an open diary to the world, it's, um, it's very time consuming. To, so to be compensated by these different brands uh, is a great thing. So like I said, wrestling, brand ambassadorships, uh, speaking to the youth, <clears throat> I got to keep it moving, you know. But of course, of course, New Japan, 
uh, I thought about daily, daily mm -hmm. after my release. I've done so many interviews after my release with, w with WWE where I stress, where I talked about wanting to work for New Japan. Now I just want 2020 to be over and then <laughs> 2021 to come. Yes. Exactly. So I can hopefully go out to Japan because that's where it's at for me. If I could, I haven't been out there. I want to be able to experience it. And if I love it, who knows? Maybe I'll live out there. That's that's what I was going to ask if you had ambitions to, to go to Japan. And if so, is there anybody on that side of the roster that you're interested in or, or that stands out to you that you've said, I want to get in there with? Because right now there's basically a brand split. It, it wasn't intended that way, but because of the circumstances, you have New Japan USA and New Japan Japan. Who sticks out to you? Who are like maybe a couple people that you want to get in there with? I always say <clears throat> I've enjoyed his matches with Kurt Angle, Nagata, Nagata. I know. Really? That's you know, awesome. He, he's an OG, but if I could just grace the ring with him, just give me 10 minutes with him. You know what I mean? Uh, I would have, you know, you know, had my dream match because Nagata is someone that I would love to share the ring with. Uh, Abushi, uh, who knows? Who knows? There's so uh, Kenta. Uh, there's so much talent there that I, I definitely want to definitely want to share the ring with. Uh, definitely Will Osprey. He's he's dynamite in the ring, and um, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, I want 2020 to end so I can go out there, you know, but Nagata is my dreamless match. Did you grow up a wrestling fan? Did you happen to watch him in WCW at all when he would come through there? Yeah, a little in WCW, but I, I didn't really pay attention and appreciate it because I wasn't in the business, you know? Yeah. So when he would wrestle, it was just like another face, you know? Sure. But I, I did follow WWE, WWF, uh, All Japan, New Japan. I followed all that. And I always thought the style was kind of intimidating because, you know, it's physical. But now being a now being seasoned, September 11th will be 18 years that I've been wrestling uh, tomorrow. Um, I'm very seasoned and I, I can fit to any style. You know what I mean? So I'm very blessed for it. You've already been on the record and talked about the, the Nexus reunion of sorts that was supposed to happen earlier this year. <laughs> so you've covered that extensively, but... There was a bit of one a couple years ago in Chikara, I remember. It was uh, yourself, Michael <laughs> Tarver, and uh, PJ Black doing the King of Trios. Now, I love that tournament because they do that a lot. Like, they've brought back Demolition, the BWO. How were you approached for that, and what did you think after, after that had been so long since you'd been a part of that? Well, Nexus Alliance was a lot of fun. Uh, I've always been cool with Tarver and PJ. But I was intimidated because I didn't think that I could hang with these guys. These Chikar guys are flying and so innovative. And I was always trained 80 style. So, yeah. again, uh, being thrusted upon that, we all delivered. And I actually could keep up with those guys. You know what I mean? But, yeah, earlier this year, Nexus was supposed to come back apparently. I mean, I was called in January of this year about coming back for WrestleMania access and uh, some network stuff. And then I got another call in February or March saying that we were canceling access, canceling all that stuff. If any opportunities open up, we'll definitely give you a call. So recently I was on their show, The Bump, which was really cool. They took care of me on that. But like I said, I'm not on the ban list. Uh, uh, I, I'm, still, I'm still loved and adored by the production team and WWE, nothing lasts forever, but again, I got to keep it moving, but I'm very happy to kind of toot my own horn because I've been, I've been holding this debut in for some time now yeah. that I was getting jealous of my friends, like he yeah. getting jealous of, uh, who else, who else? Uh, uh, There've been a lot of them that have been making yeah, waves. A lot of guys, a lot of guys just doing great things. The good brothers, you know, I'm like, man, these guys are, all doing great things. I can't wait for my announcement. Now I can toot my own horn now. Now, Rusev. Huh? How long has it been? How long has this deal been put together? Uh, uh, May or June is when Rocky wow. Romero reached out to me. And then we started rocking and rolling in July and August, you know. And now, 
you know, a ton of shows, a ton of shows that you'll definitely be seeing me on. And I'm very happy for it. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think WWE will try to run back that reunion? But it seems like you're, if you had your preference, you'd uh, probably focus on New Japan over that. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, I, 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 I love to get signed by New Japan. I'm not signed with them. Yeah. Uh, but if I can get signed with New Japan, that's great. If WWE calls me back, I mean, like, I'm not one of those. I was just talking to Chavo earlier. I'm not one of those grizzled vets that are going to talk bad about the company. Yeah. I don't have anything. I've had great experiences with WWE. The only time I would get upset is like uh, years ago, they took me and Lana off a Abu Dhabi show, you know, and mm. I made a big, uh, I was booty hurt on Twitter. You know what I mean? So that's the kind of stuff that I'll like get upset over. But for the most part, all my experiences with WWE, I love, you know, people say, oh, I wish you would have been uh, a tag team champion longer. It is what it is. We were champion two or three months, but I did it. You know, uh, whether it's five times or 10 times, I, I, I became a tag team champion. So all my experiences with WWE, I'm very happy for. But now at 36, I still have a lot left in the tank. And uh, the best is yet to come out of Mr. No Days All because that's literally my lifestyle. That lifestyle of constant grind and hustle. Uh, Mr. No Days Off is where it's at with me. I'm always interested to ask people, especially during quarantine, after quarantine, are you much of a video gamer? <laughs> uh, well, I've been, I've been like a gunkle, you know. I have two god babies running around here. They're going to be seven years old, September 13th. So I've been, since this whole pandemic, I've been managing my time with them, doing my sponsorships, mm -hmm. and being blessed to do New Japan. Yeah. So ha do you remember the first time you were in a video game? Were you like, man, this is cool? Like, oh, this, yeah. this is it. I think, I think 20, 2013, maybe 2013 was my first video game. 13, 2K, 14, I remember it was 2K14 was the first one you were in. So that would have been two, 2013 would have been the year. Oh, what, okay. What, what year did I say? Oh, it, 2013, but they, they like the year before they'll put out 2K14. That way, oh. that way it see, stays relevant a few more months. Yeah. See, see you're the professional. <laughs> you're a professional. You know your you know your information. You know it. So did you ever have to like go in and do like voiceover work or motion capture or anything like that for, for any of those? No, I would have loved to have done that. But I know a lot of a lot of that stuff was saved for I guess the indie guys. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I was never involved in that. I mean, I've gotten myself scanned, which is cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I never had to get hooked up to those things and do all the moves and stuff like that i would love to do that now i'm not opposed to that at all and also i've always heard the checks don't hurt either oh yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it is what it is i always say you know with the, <clears throat> with the wrestling if i would have done this for the money i would have complained a long time a yeah. long time ago i do it for the love and the passion and all that other mushy mushy stuff because it's real to me you know what i mean you know this is me speaking from the heart you know i I love this business and I still have a lot left to offer. And I'm very happy to be a trailblazer in New Japan because there's no one like me. And to have that opportunity to, have that opportunity to whoop up on people uh, and do my thing and still spread positivity and block the hate movement, uh, I'm very blessed with New Japan. Well, Fred, I appreciate you for taking the time. I encourage everybody, check him out Fridays on New Japan Strong right after you get done with uh smackdown you can check out uh, <laughs> you can check out new japan strong there's so much going on there uh watch the it all watch it all let the people know where they can follow you on social media uh twitter instagram at real fred rosser my government name and also you can follow my podcast uh that's very therapeutic to me i do it with my real life neighbor pro and bro wrestling that's awesome uh and yeah, hashtag block the hate, baby. Uh, block the hate, spread the word, spread the numbers is what it's all about. Fred, thank you so much. Thank you always, bro. Until next time, guys, we're out.